Summer is here and the shade garden has exploded. Come with me as we take a summer tour of this gorgeous space. Welcome to Gardening with Freakside. I am Jenny and today we are here at the shade garden right outside of our kitchen alongside of our house. If you will remember back in early May we did a spring tour of this space and y'all loved it just as much as I do and we've got some great um, viewer feedback so we have a few additions to this beautiful space. It is summertime, so I said, hey, let's do an update because if you will remember what it looked like in May versus now, there is a massive difference. Everybody is happy and growing and right now at their full potential. So I said, you know what? Let's do an update on this video. Now, before we start, I'm gonna let you know if you didn't see the spring one, one, go back and watch that because it's a great video. And then two, this is a mixture of annuals and perennials and some shrubs in this bed. I went through a lot of detail in that first video about those perennials. We're gonna do it again. Um, but y'all, there's a lot of plants in here and I can't remember every single detail, especially the growing zones. So pay attention to the video. We'll pop up all that information. So I may not say it, but we'll put it in the video. So get your little notepad out and take notes for the growing zones and all that information. But here we are. So this bed is a nice long bed. It runs pretty much the length of our house. So we have the house here. Then off to the other side, we have the driveway. So this area is very visible for us all the time. Not only when we drive in, but also this big bay window is where our kitchen table is. So we are looking out of this window constantly. And then the small window behind me is right above my kitchen sink. So again, I see it all the time. This bed is gorgeous and I absolutely love it. When we did the tour in May, one of you fantastic viewers said, Jenny, you need to add some window boxes to it. And I love the idea. We did it. They are gorgeous two hay racks. I got them from the Kinsman Company. They have been such a huge blessing and so much fun to watch grow in the last, gosh, we planted these at the end of May, so it's only been like a month since we've planted them, and you can tell that they are happy and growing. The caladiums, the um, broalia, the sweet potato vine, all sorts of beautiful shade annuals are in there. Just a massive growth in that. Then down here below it, we have um, just an assortment of perennials and annuals and they are just exploding. Look at Wiggles and Squiggles. So this is Wiggles and Squiggles Hosta, which is a really fun hosta. This is gonna be its maximum height, and you can tell that it's just putting on its flower scapes. Um, it's a great lime green color, nice wavy texture to it, but it is a petite hosta. Um, back in the corners and all throughout here, we have the Rocapulco Double Impatient, and this is the rose color. In the window boxes, I have coral reef. They're a little hidden because they've been a little slow to grow, but all throughout the bed, this is the rose. Then down in front, look at diamond frost. Diamond frost is just growing and gorgeous. I love the airiness of this um, plant. I did the diamond frost right here because this little corner of the bed, for some reason, um, just gets a lot more sun than the rest of the bed. I think it's how the cut of the roof and so this gets a lot of sun and this diamond frost can do sun or shade so it's a great addition right here. I have three lady in red perennial ferns and I love perennial ferns. They are fantastic. They're huge. They have just exploded in growth but I have discovered I have a little issue going on that maybe y'all can help me with. So I have some sort of fungus uh, a rust, a smoke, I don't know what it is. We're going to try to figure it out. But along the leaves of my perennial ferns, they're turning black. 
there is not a bug. This is not a bug issue. It's not a pest issue. I really think this is some sort of fungal issue. Um, so I've trimmed some of them out and then tomorrow I'm going to actually treat it with a fungicide spray and hopefully that will cure this problem. I'll cut out the leaves that are most affected and then spray the rest of the plant. But if you happen to have perennial ferns and you have dealt with this and you know what it is, will you please let me know and how you treat it? Because um, it doesn't kill the plant, but it just makes them really ugly for the rest of the season. Another thing, if you are a southerner or if you were in the region of the country that you were blessed with Japanese beetles, guess what? They're here. So Japanese beetles also like my ferns and there are two right there. And that's really about the only thing in this bed that they really will go after. Um, there's a couple of ways that I can treat it. You can actually physically pull them off and put them in like buckets of soapy water. I don't like that because their little legs are sticky and they, ugh, I don't like Japanese beetles. So I don't do that. Um, you could also use a systemic chemical drench that you pour in the base, in the ground of the plant, and the plant sucks up. Um, that insecticide and so the Japanese beetles won't eat it. Um, you could use um, a seven dust and I know there is controversy spray because that is it will kill everything including your good pollinators, your honeybees, your bumblebees, anything that would touch it would kill it. Um, but that is an option. If you do use the seven spray, use it very, very early in the morning before any of your pollinators are awake. I know that's controversial. If you, have, if you have Japanese beetles and you found an organic solution to deal with it, please let us know. But if you live in the country and you don't have Japanese beetles, well, consider yourself blessed because they are awful and no insecticidal soap spray kills them. So bless your heart if you don't have them. That's all we're going to say about that. All right, moving on. Look at these hostas. They are blooming. Now they're getting towards the end of their bloom cycle and some of them are looking a little sad at the bottom but I absolutely love the color variation of these blooms. It is not a solid purple, it is almost a, a variegated with some stripes in there. These two, I don't have a clue what they are. We got them years ago. They're a gorgeous hosta. Just know that in areas like this, find a hosta that you like. Go for different sizes, different colors, different textures. These are growing and are very happy. In the back, we have three milk and honey astilbes. Astilbes are a great perennial for your shade. This particular one, they'll start out a white and then they'll turn to a creamy pink color. So those three were additions um, to the garden in the late winter this year. Annette's holly fern is so happy and she is growing and putting on new fronds. Um, it's just a great um, I call it Annette's holly fern because it came from my friend Annette in Texas. It's really just a holly fern, but I name plants after people. So that's Annette's holly fern, and holly ferns are great. They're evergreen. They're nice, nice and coarse and tough, um, very low maintenance. Bugs don't like them. Japanese beetles don't like them, so that's a win-win, and it'll get nice and big as it continues to grow. We've got, again, more wiggles and squiggles, but look at this area right here. This is like insane. If you remember back in May, this is um, a Sun King. Both of these are the same plant. Um, it is a type of spike nard. And this beautiful, massive plants, um, <laughs> they're loving life, clearly, and they are thriving. They will get to be about a three foot by three foot. Here in the middle of the Sun Kings is a ghost fern. This ghost fern does not have the fungus too much of what the lady in red does, but I have another ghost fern down here that does. So this is, same, is susceptible to the same fun, fungus. Um, believe it or not, this is a pot. Do you remember the bl bright blue pot from that garden tour back in May? Well, it's still there, but you really can't see the pot at all because the ghost fern has grown up so much, the sun kings, um, but in this pot is um, the white broalia from Proven Winners. Um, this is Snow Princess, which is a sweet alyssum. And then under here somewhere is Dichondra Silver Falls, which is totally hidden, but it's this beautiful silvery gray foliage plant that trails. And again, the Sun Kings have just grown so much that you really can't see it, but it still works. It still works. And then of course, 
Um, the window box here, this window box does get more sun. If you remember when we planted it, I told you that this gets more sun. So we put in um, the Superbina Whiteout from Proven Winners to bring that pop of white. Gets more sun, it's doing great. Um, there's the Blue Broalia in there, more caladiums. And then back there, there is the double impatience of the coral reef. Now I know right now you can't really see those double impatience, but when I'm standing there at my kitchen sink washing dishes, I can see it. So it's like almost, I, there's two different containers with this. What you see right here, and then when you're inside looking out, what you see. So it's a lot of fun, and I've just enjoyed it so much. Coming down through here, again, there's more Broalia. This hydrangea right here is Diva from Proven Winners. Now, there are some older blooms, and we did just get a big rainstorm, so they're that's why these are, are pushed down. Um, but this is Diva. Diva is a lace cap hydrangea. She'll get to be about a three by three. It is pH dependent, so it'll be pink or blue depending on your the soil pH level that you have. Um, this is a new bud. This hydrangea is not on irrigation, so you can tell that there have been a couple of times when it's gotten really hot and it's gotten dry. Um, so that's why there is some burning on the leaves. I would like at some point to put some irrigation in here, especially on the hydrangeas, so they could receive consistent water. That will help with the heat wilt. It helps keep them fresh um, and the blooms looking long, better longer. But Diva is doing great. This is She's not even a year old in this garden, so she's doing well. Here we have, if you remember, back in May I told you about, this is Franny's hydrangea. Again, this is not a scientific name, but my friend Francesca, who we call Franny, gave this to us when we moved in this house almost 17 years ago. And we really have no clue what it is. I think it could be um, waterfall hydrangea, but I'm not really sure. So it's just simply Franny's hydrangea. Normally, I always cut it down early spring because it is just so big. But when I did that, I would get blooms late in like almost like September, October. So this year was a test to see if she would bloom on her old growth. She does. She's gorgeous. Um, and so I'm, I'm loving Franny's hydrangea right now. And then, of course, so we're dealing with the sun right now. You know, you never know the weather in North Carolina. They say if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. It'll change. We had thunder and lightning and storms just... 30 minutes ago, but here we are. So you can see again, the Solomon seal has filled in. Um, I mean, look at Franny, look at Franny. Look at, look how pretty she is. Is that not gorgeous? It's almost a white, almost a light blue. It's just gorgeous. Now, down here, I finally remembered what this hydrangea is. This is Proven Winners Let's Dance Starlight. It is another lace cap hydrangea. It will be pH dependent, so this one is pink. It could be blue. Next year it may be blue, who knows? Um, but it's a three by three, it is fantastic. If I remember correctly on this one, it's a zone five to nine, but we'll put all that information up there for you. And then down here at the bottom are those three of the um, Terenia. So again, it's an annual from Proven Winners. It is mostly shade, but it can do some sun, so it does really well here because clearly, Late evening, late afternoon, it does get sun. But the Terenia is doing great. It's low, it spreads wide. Um, and this is the large blue amethyst. And the pollinators absolutely love it. So it is just filling in. Then this is the, another ghost fern that is doing really well. Um, this one did have the same kind of fungus on it, but I have already cut all of that um, infected leaves out. But just again, here we are. End of June, July is just knocking on the door and everything is gorgeous and thriving and loving life. It just shows you don't give up on your plants. I do feed these regularly with the water soluble fertilizer from Proven Winners. When I planted all of my annuals, of course I used a slow release and now I'm using the water soluble every seven to 10 days. But Hope this is giving you a little bit of inspiration. I hope you've enjoyed the update on how gorgeous 
this shade bed is doing. Make sure that you like this video. And if you're not already subscribed to Gardening with Creekside, please do so. And I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.